Hey, Dee, how you doing? Wonderful. How are you? It's great talking to you. I met you briefly in Berlin. So anyway. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations on the film. And I, I am just devastated to hear about Rashida. I mean, obviously I live in Atlanta, but I mean, when did you find out about Rashida? Um, well, I don't remember the exact date, but yeah. I, I found out about um, in, through social media. I thought it was a, a joke. Someone had told me she passed last night. And I, not a joke. I just thought it was something mean and uh, hateful that someone was doing. And then by the second DM that I got, I started to kind of ask questions and uh, I called one of the one of my producers and asked when was the last time they had spoken to her and 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 whatnot. So I did, so I reached out and and didn't get an answer, and so I started to get worried. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was very tough. Yeah. So um, you know, this film was a huge success at Sundance. What made you want to make this documentary? Um. Well, there was so many reasons. Yeah. I think the number one main reason why is that I just wanted to create uh, a film based around the transgender narrative that was creative and fun or felt refreshing. And um, that was, that was, yeah. And, and, and besides that, I just wanted to make a film in general. And, and as a director, I wanted something that felt fresh and cool that could draw people in. I didn't, it slowly started to kind of sink in that this could actually become something but at the beginning it was very much like I just kind of want to express myself and I and and I want to take it as far as I can go exactly did you know all the subjects of the film already before you no, I, I didn't know any of them actually I met I met all of them some of them social media some through mutual friends and 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 whatnot um how many how long were you actually in Atlanta filming this um, well, I started in New York and uh, I think around 2000, end of 2020. Okay. Uh, and the pandemic happened and it was kind of like, um, wait, was the pandemic at the, the beginning of 2020? I think so. I think it was the beginning of 2020. So yeah, so I, I got the idea then and, and, um, and I started filming B-roll, a lot of stuff around the city just to kind of get warmed up with actually okay. filming a film. I was like, what the hell am I doing? I haven't even filmed the first girl. I just started filming around the city and uh, some of the stuff I did end up using in the film. But uh, I worked my way up to the girls, a uh, couple of girls in, in New York, Daniela and Dominique. Yeah. And um, I lost the, the space that I was staying at. I, and I was kind of like forced to moved to Miami but on my way to Miami I stopped in Atlanta to shoot Leah uh another uh protagonist who I met on uh, YouTube yeah and then I was introduced to Coco uh by my friend Dustin um Dustin the doll Dustin Loman and so yeah and, and so yeah I um that's how I met the girls okay I mean the re the response to Sundance was amazing can you talk about that experience Oh yeah, I mean, seeing people, that standing ovation was just like, it was so iconic. I had no idea that that was like, it, it doesn't happen as often as I thought it does. I like, okay, yeah, they just congratulated me and there's a standing ovation. It was like kind of, and my my uh, program was like, yeah, I've been here for almost eight years and that's never happened, just so you know. I was like, oh, okay, hey, okay, got it. And so, you know, then, you know, being signed to CAA and and getting the offer from Magnolia, I really, it really kind of like stood out. Like, hello, hello, bitch, you're you're doing something incredible. Wake the hell up and wake up. And so uh, that experience at Sundance, obviously, not to sound corny, but it was like literally life changing. It it like gave me a second opportunity in life. Literally gave me a second opportunity and. Uh, man, just thank God for the people in the audience loving it. Like, thank God. Like, it's one thing if organizations, you know, kind of like put their stamp of approval, but the audience, people, real people saying, yes, this fuck what we want. And this is what we like. That that meant the world to me. Exactly. Um, how, I mean, obviously you have, you deal with four main protagonists, but how did you sort of whittle it down or decide how, what to use and what not to use in the film? Oh my God. 
I was, uh, it was, it was, it was heart wrenching yeah. not to use a lot of the footage. I'm actually thinking I need to do a, a director's cut soon because <laughs> man, that, that was, that was one of the hardest things I had to do is, is kind of like, um, uh, get rid of some of the, or not commit to some of the footage. Um, some really stunning quotes and, uh, and visuals, you know, it just didn't, some of the stuff just didn't flow with the film per se. It would have threw, it would have threw a lot of things off, but, um, I think that, uh, um, yeah, couldn't remember your question. Yeah. I was just asking how you whittled it down and decided what to use versus not using. So. Oh yeah. I struggled. I okay. struggled. <laughs> but but at the end of the day, you know, you have to, as much as you want to work day and night, day and night, day and night, which like I do, yeah. you know, you have to take a break. You have to take a break and come back and step and come back objectively and look at it, which was hard to do too, to pull me away from the editing. Exactly. Atlanta has played a prominent role in a, in a lot of your work. Can you sort of talk about the importance of Atlanta to your career? Sure. Um, well, as a as a music producer, my, my career really kind of took off there yeah. um, after uh, I think Lil Wayne, it was Lil Wayne or Carrie Hilson working with Timbaland. Um, it was one of those two, I can't remember who bought one of my records first, but it was when that happened, every people just started calling and um, I started meeting everyone, rappers, pop artists, Britney Spears, Lil Wayne, nah, 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 nah. and I really found my my place, you know, in the music industry, and uh, and it was it was going pretty well. And I and once I started to transition in 2014, um, all of those uh, connections and opportunities kind of just dwindled away very quickly. And I found myself, um, yeah, on the brink of homelessness, which eventually happened. My things were evicted from my apartment. Um, they repoed my 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 bins that I worked very hard for. I was very proud, and I've always had like a little little beat up Jeep. You know, I I was never too big into the name brand stuff, so that was a reality check. You know, I was in denial for years that I wasn't being discriminated or ousted because of me being transgender. But that's exactly what was happening. So I eventually left Atlanta and moved back to New York. What what year? Do you remember what years you were in Atlanta? Yeah, I was. In Atlanta, like 2000, I think I went there with Stacey Barth around 2005, no, 2006, okay. 2007. Okay. Yeah, 2007. And I, I, I left 2017. Gotcha. So what are you working on next? <laughs> oh, I'm working on this, this really, I'm working on, on, on a really, um, <clears throat> another documentary. Okay. But it's, it's, is going to be really amazing. And uh, I'm also working on a narrative. Both are in soft development right now. And it's, it's going to be a game changer for sure. That's great. I watched the film again last night before the interview and I was, you know, as, as entertained but as it was when I first saw it. But I read your notes that you wanted to showcase the fun, you know, humanized natural side of Black trans women in this. But obviously, um, as a reminder with Rashida's murder, how, how important is it for you in the film to inspire the world now with this film, you know, with, with Coco's legacy? Well, Coco was a fun person yeah. and she was, she was, she was a party animal and, but she was so sweet and quiet and so polite and country and Southern and all the things that, that just would draw people to, to anyone. And I want to continue to tell stories of how great, trans and queer people are outside of, you know, uh, the narrative that we're, you know, having to give people, you know, I think there's a, a, a very strong, vivid human side of us that we're not often able to show outside of the constraints of the cliche roles, you know, exactly. it's, gotta the top. it's gotta be traumatized. It's gotta be all the things, so much to us than that. And I just wanna make sure that that continues to go. Yeah. Obviously, you, you, you obviously you know this, but transgender representation has an, has not always been great in Hollywood. It, it's 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 been pretty horrible. Um, 
when when is the first time you saw representation like maybe in media television or film that you really related to said yeah th this is this is me and this is what this is a great representation a positive a positive representation um there was a model called andrea Bejik, and uh she she was transgender but she didn't present trans she didn't present woman she was just like really androgyny and and she was just completely destroying killing the fucking fashion industry like just murdering doing every top show and everything and i just was like damn this is so badass and then laverne cox hits the the cover of time magazine yeah that was it for me that was that i was like damn that bitch did that and 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 it, i've never seen anything like that in my life yeah. and uh you know those 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 two people in that and then in that moment really inspired me to just go ahead and start my transition okay have you been back to atlanta since the filming of this i'm so over atlanta okay. i'm over atlanta because i'm just i have so many memories that 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 didn't suit me well but i i love my friends there and i love people from atlanta but the music industry really did a number on me but uh i've been there a couple times i think once or, or twice to film some of the girls and uh and visit my best friend other than that i yeah yeah okay gotcha yeah. wait where I, are you I, i'm in atlanta i live in atlanta. oh you're in atlanta yeah, I, I'm a writer, but also um, I coordinate the Gay and Lesbian Film Festival here. We showed Kokomo City in April. Um, oh, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. And then the Atlanta Film Festival showed it about a month after we did. Uh, yeah. yeah. The reaction was amazing. So I heard. Yeah, thank you so much. Congratulations. Yeah. I think my time is over. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and I hope the film is a, is a trem tremendous success. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much. Thanks.